The aim of the webinar is to share evaluation findings and best practice with NHS Health Check stakeholders to encourage them to think about their local delivery models and how they might translate to transfer that learning into their practice. So, hello everyone and, and welcome to you on this snowy day. I'm Dr. Sri Kaladindi. I'm a consultant psychiatrist at uh, the South London and Maudsley and today we have Dr. Asif Baklani, consultant psychiatrist, Kingston Recovery and Support Team, and Hemant Patel, Secretary of the North East London Local Pharmaceutical Committee, to talk to us about physical health checks for people with psychosis. So the webinar session will take the format of a short introduction and presentations by the guest speakers, and then a question and answer session at the end, where everyone will get an opportunity to ask questions. So, First of all, just to outline some of the issues, we all know that people with severe, serious mental illness have uh, a shorter life expectancy on average of around 20 years than people who don't have serious mental illness. And this is in part due to some of the socioeconomic issues it is also in part due to uh, their lifestyle and it is also in part due to the medications that they are prescribed for their psychosis. So, For example, we know that people are three times more likely to smoke. They're at double the risk of obesity and diabetes, three times the risk of hypertension and metabolic syndrome, and five times the risk of dyslipidemia. We also know that this group of, of people are much more likely, about three times more likely, to come to A&E with acute physical health crises than people without SMI. And we also know that they attend their GP more regularly also. So, uh, what we know is that there is huge variability in the physical health checks for this group of people. And this is not talking about the sort of public health uh, national screening around, for example, cancer um, and you know 40 year health checks and so on. This is the annual physical health check that is um, part of good practice and, and national guidance for anybody with a serious mental illness. So uh, we have a very helpful graph here that you will be able to see, which shows the 15 year sort of earlier death of people with SMI. Um, and as you can see over the years, it hasn't really improved very much. Um, and it is something that happens across the whole world, in fact, as you can see from some of this uh, data from other parts of the, of the world, Scandinavian countries. <clears throat> so if we could have the next slide. Um, that what we do also know is that uh, it's about access to people accessing care and checks and also once checks have been uh, actually undertaken uh, the ability to engage with investigations that are required and also treatment engaging with treatment and treatment completion um, what, what is very clear is that the variability of health checks means that we don't firstly identify uh, people who have uh, particular health needs, let alone then get them through to investigation and treatment in the numbers that we ought to. Um, we know also, and point four here on the slide, that they often need support and outreach to their homes or communities to access care. And because of some of the gaps that have come in around clarity of who exactly should be taking on this particular uh, task and service provision. Uh, I think what's happened is that we haven't been as effective as we could be. So I do know also, and I know Amy Clark from NHS England is on this line as well on the call, uh, that um, guidance has gone out to GPs and CCGs around those annual physical health checks with a view to um, CCGs commissioning 
specific input uh, by primary care and that can take different mo different models. Uh, we have had for five years now uh, a sequin, a physical health sequin that's national for provider trusts in the, in the mental health sector. And I think by having the uh, other component in the primary care sector as well, that will really help us to work better across the whole system. So what I'm going to do now is hand over to Dr. Baklani and Hemant Patel to hear from them about their uh, very innovative way of identifying this issue locally and doing something innovative about it. So please, I'm going to pass it on to Asif and Hemant. Thank you, Sri. Um, it's Asif Bachelani speaking. So I wanted to give us the context of where um, NELFT, the organisation, was when we started thinking about this project. So we started thinking about this project towards the end of 2014 and just after the first cycle of the National Audit of Schizophrenia. And that, in essence, showed that NELFT was towards the bottom of the England Trust and the poor performer in London around physical health care. Even if you looked at good performances, <coughs> um, generally speaking, at best, that only 32% of trusts were um, getting all five physical health checks. And so the difficulties we had is that the traditional models of doing these health checks, which might be doctor-based physical health clinics or nurse-led physical health clinics, didn't seem to be getting through to this vulnerable group of patients uh, and patients who may not actively engage in their physical health care. So NELT has a track record of being innovative and working with partners. And so uh, having had uh, in passing conversation with our pharmacy colleagues in North East London, we came up with a model of thinking about could community pharmacies develop, develop a, a system together to deliver health checks in the community where the pharmacists have the advantage of being in the community, working closely with the community, and could this deliver better results? We also had the support of our uh, local director of public health, Matthew Cole, who was very keen for us to try out new models and to support health checks for this very vulnerable group of people with psychosis. Um, so I'm going to hand, hand over to Hemant, who's going to talk a bit about what we did, and I'll be talking a bit about the results a bit later on. Thank you, Asif. This is Hemant Patel. Um, we um, very much wanted to look at long-term conditions. And one of the long-term conditions we were looking at was mental health. So it was fortunate to um, uh, speak to uh, Asif and his colleagues about uh, contribution from community pharmacy. One in four uh, patients suffering from long-term condition also has some kind of a mental health issue. So um, it was important that we played a part in bringing uh, physical health checks and medicines together in one place. But as the conversation developed, we got a little bit more ambitious, and I'll explain to you in a minute how ambitious we got. The pathway was relatively simple in that the patient was identified at uh, NELFT, and um, a care coordinator would bring the patient to uh, community pharmacy, where an appointment would be made um, with the uh, patient, and they would carry out physical checks plus other checks, which included medicines checks and uh, one or two other things. And then we had developed a system for collecting the data and passing it back to NELFT. And there were some issues relating to collection of data and transferring them, perhaps which can, we can deal with that during our discussions. So moving on from there, um, we look at um, the next uh, slide. We will give you some more detail. So once an appointment is made and the patient is being seen, um, uh, we looked at a number of things. Uh, so um, uh, medicines check was one of them where um, we uh, trained our pharmacists on doing equivalent to what we call medicines use reviews for the mentally health patients, which we developed ourselves because there is no national medicines use review or a new medicine service targeted at mentally ill patients. Um, we also looked at the flu status because it's important that they get the jab. 
plus we looked at other factors. In terms of physical health checks, um, uh, I think blood pressure monitoring, cholesterol, uh, glucose are all standard blood tests. Uh, but we also introduced an ECG test, which we had done locally. So uh, a physical health check was expanded to include AF as, uh, as well, because many of the medicines taken by patients uh, cause um, atrial fibrillation in mentally ill patients. And we developed the idea of empowering patients with long-term conditions to self-care uh, with the help of uh, a specially trained community pharmacist. As part of their training, uh, they learn uh, how to coach. So they spend two days learning coaching skills because instructions alone we did not feel would be uh, sufficient. And so uh, motivational interviewing was developed into coaching, and, um, and that, that was a locally developed program which took a bit of time. So then they looked at the smoking status, uh, amount of exercise, and diet, and very much concentrated on producing behavioral change in patients who really need to look at their lifestyle in order to get the best outcomes. And we wanted to measure whether there was a change in outcomes or not. So um, a well-established tool, a patient activation measure, was introduced um, uh, to measure outcomes. Um, and this took place uh, at the start of the program and then after the second and third appointment. And we have seen improvement in PAM scores as they work with patients. Also, I think it's important to look at the experience of the, that the patient has of the service and the advice which is given to them. And we produced a written uh, health and well-being plans for individual patients so that they understood what was uh, discussed. Also, it is important that they are able to uh, come back to the health and well-being plan and um, uh, remember that when they get home. So um, I think it is important that rather than just giving instructions, we incorporate behavioral change, uh, um, uh, PAM tool, and health and well-being plan into a single uh, service which records uh, um, improvements and helps uh, patients remember what was discussed at the session. Then, in terms of what was on offer in part of the self-care uh, program, um, the next slide will um, uh, take care of it because I think um, uh, uh, it is important that um, uh, we realize how many different things were done in community pharmacy. There was smoking, there was lifestyle review, we looked at body mass index, and we looked at the bloods. Um, and glucose regulation, but we also did a, a medicines check, flu check, uh, and ECG, in addition to the uh, traditional Lester uh, clinical decision support tool. Uh, I'm sorry that you, know, you cannot read um, everything which is on the screen because it's small print, but I think uh, what we wanted to do was to identify a number of areas where pharmacists can intervene and then identify the problems in red which um, would be picked up by the pharmacist. And then at the bottom would be the outcomes that we are seeking. And what is in um, uh, yellow uh, is the intervention that a pharmacist would make. Um, and I'll cover that um, in a section, in, in a second. So the patient would come to a pharmacy and they'll uh, fill in a form, uh, which takes a bit of time, uh, where we looked at the biology of the patient, so the age, uh, sex, um, race, things like that. And then the psycho so psychosocial behavior uh, um, was assessed using tools. So once this is completed, it gives us a more holistic picture of a patient um, than normally just looking at a prescription, which only tells us about the medicines that the patient is taking. Once we have got a holistic picture of the patient, the pharmacist will look at the assessment and then make one of the three decisions. The first thing would be that some of the items require 
uh, 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 GP referral, um, and so it will be fed back to the GP. Or it might be that there might be social factors we need to be taken into account, which again um, would be referred to other people. So, for example, exercise or um, you know, some additional support. So once the pharmacist has completed uh, creating a care plan, they'll make an appointment, and the patient will sit down with a trained pharmacist who will use coaching skills to work with the patient so that they own the problem as well as the solution and uh, produce uh, a behavioral change. This takes a bit of time, um, and I would say it usually takes between 15 to 20 minutes uh, for the conversation. Moving on, I think <coughs> there are advantages in basing this service in a community pharmacy because it is where people live and uh, for many of the mentally ill patients, a local resource is important. Also, a pharmacist is generally known to the patient and a trusting relationship is important. And most of the pharmacists um, who were involved in the program um, uh, enjoyed working with the patients using these different skills. And then uh, I want to talk a bit about coaching rather than just giving instructions. At the beginning, a pharmacist um, struggled a bit because they are used to giving instructions to patients and the conversations do not usually last more than two or three minutes. To so actually sit down with the uh, patient and ask powerful questions, which enabled them to um, produce a behavioral change was at first difficult but soon they mastered it and very much enjoyed using the coaching tools and the principles to work with the patients. All, all the pharmacists said that they very much um, enjoyed using health coaching and also there is a transferable skills which they can use for other patients, for example, smoking cessation clients and others. So the pharmacists did the physical checks they did the ECG, and on premises they did the blood test, which uh, meant that the results were available instantaneously, and there was no need for a second appointment. Um, again, um, I think this is probably the first time where we are bringing um, uh, uh, tools to community pharmacy where blood results are analyzed and interpretation made and advice given um, based on actual uh, blood tests. As I said earlier on, we developed a medicines use review um, and medicines check uh, for pharmacists. Again, many pharmacists wondered why there was not a national medicines use review uh, for mentally ill patients when there is for physical health checks. And I think this is something which needs to be focused on because many patients who have got diabetes, uh, respiratory diseases, things like that, also have mild to moderate serious um, uh, mental health illness. Um, and we also checked the flu and uh, smoking status, and they were offered programs. And in the vast majority of the patients, um, uh, smoking cessation interventions and flu vaccinations was welcomed by the patients. Now I'll hand back to Asif to talk about the learnings from the project. Uh, thank you, Hamant. Um, so as with any project, you, you always uh, learn things and, and kind of wish you could do things differently if you were able to start again. Um, but some of the major learnings from the project uh, was having a very enthusiastic and dedicated workforce. Um, so the community pharmacists were very keen to get involved, uh, very hardworking, diligent, and would often come in on the weekends and evenings after work to do the training. And they are a very enthusiastic workforce and are very well integrated into the community. I think another key aspect, uh, which is something that NELT is very good at, as I've mentioned before, is developing partnerships. So we chose to have a kind of very collaborative partnership model rather than the contractor-subcontractor model. 
and, and we found that that supported our relationship and, and helped the success of the project. A, a third really key factor was have what we called a liaison officer, um, but in essence somebody working between NELFT, the community mental health team based in Barking and Dagenham, and the community pharmacist as, as a way of linking in, um, making sure the checks are done, linking with the care coordinator is a key aspect of it. The third thing which we found when, when looking at health checks was actually there was very limited information for patients about why they should have these health checks. So we as healthcare professionals say, yes, you must have these health checks, but actually there was very little information about it. And one of the things that we developed was a, an information leaflet that could be given to patients explaining why we're doing these health checks rather than just saying, as a healthcare professional, I know best, you're going to have one of these checks. And another bespoke aspect of this program was about developing a training program for people with, with uh, for pharmacists, and and there were differing levels of knowledge around mental health with the pharmacists, but we were able to develop a program to increase their knowledge and awareness and comfort level around supporting people with mental health problems. Things that we had to overcome as as part of the project was uh, one of the big bugbears within the NHS is different IT systems. So the pharmacists had a different IT system. Uh, NELFT has a different EPR. Um, electronic patient record system and one of the important things for NELFT was to have this data recorded uh, in our electronic patient record and we use RIO uh, and so initially we were talking about how we might get pharmacists to enter this data directly into RIO but that unfortunately wasn't going to happen uh, so in essence we had the liaison officer uh, manually entering the data into our, our EPR record which helped us meet our targets in NELF and our sequin targets, but was quite user intensive. Another key aspect uh, that came through uh, and perhaps was a little bit surprising was um, when the health checks were first started, they were taking quite a long time. So we had envisaged about 45 minutes to an hour, but actually they were taking an hour and a half plus. And obviously that was maybe a bit frustrating for patients uh, and, and for the care coordinator. And so as part of the process, we were able to kind of get people a bit more experienced and a bit more comfortable and got the health checks down to about 45 minutes to, to, to 60 minutes. Um, and I think for the organization, um, physical health checks was one of, the main, one of the many factors that are important for organizations to meet. And so although we as a team felt it was very important, there were other things that came into play around care planning or risk assessments. So sometimes the priority of health checks might drop. And actually one of the key things that we found was it was working with the local team was one of the barriers to overcome. The patients, uh, once we spoke about the health checks, were very keen, the community pharmacists were keen, but it's working through those barriers within the CMH team. One of the other key roles or aspects of this program was around a health navigator. Um, Shri at the start said that this is a very vulnerable group. Uh, often schizophrenia is often called the abandoned illness. Uh, and what that means is Patients with schizophrenia, due to the nature of their illness and the medication we give them, often are not actively engaged in their health care. So one of the things we were really keen on was to have somebody supporting them to access the community pharmacist or even access the GP in order to treat the conditions that we were finding. And unfortunately, we weren't able to do that within the life of the program, which was 15 months. And, and so although we're very happy with the results that we got, it could have been even better if having a health navigator because patients with um, schizophrenia or bipolar often need that support to access um, health care. So one of the things that the Health Foundation project, uh, Health Foundation uh, is very keen on is outcomes. And so they reminded us of very regular intervals that we have to keep an eye on our outcomes. Um, and so what you can see on the slide is we offered our health checks to 180 people within the community mental health team, of which 140 attended, and that gives us a completion rate of about 78%. And when you compared that to the standard NELF model of 36%, that's a significant improvement. The other thing that you will see clearly from the graph is that 70%, or just over 70% of patients had all five cardiometabolic outcomes. And if you remember back to what I said back in 2014, NELFT was only achieving 15%, but as of, sort of 2016, had got up to 36%. Um, and so we'd reached a good coverage of both the, the general checks as well as the ECG, which is a key part of the cardiometabolic assessment for people with psychosis. And the reason that 
uh, some of the blood tests were a bit lower than the other checks of that. That came online later. So we were able to get on-site testing uh, a few months into the project, and that's why it's 70% and not 90%. So when we think about the total number of patients that we were looking to get to, which is 350, we got to 40%. Um, uh, so pretty decent coverage. Um, and we had pretty decent uh, buy-in rates by patient, um, as I said, 78%. And as I mentioned before, I think one of the main barriers wasn't the patients. Uh, I think once you offered them the health checks, they were very interested. It was, it was getting to the point where the team or the community mental health team or the care coordinator were happy to support the program. Another key aspect that we were interested in is looking at patient activation or patient motivation or, or interest in their self-care. And so one of our outcome measures was the PAM measure, which is the patient activation measure. And so what you can see is we had good coverage again at the first appointment. So um, almost 90% of the patients who attended their first appointment had a PAM measure. And what you can then see, there's a big drop off, drop off from appointment one to appointment two and appointment three. And that's where we were envisaging the health navigator to support people to continue access and, and continue to support people to have their physical health checks. Another key aspect was about smoking, and what we know is patients with psychosis, 70% um, of them smoke, and we were keen to support them to reduce or stop smoking. So about 16% of people who had the health coaching um, stopped smoking. 40% of patients got support with their exercise, and 56% of people were working to lose weight or get or healthier. And when we look at the patient activation levels, they went from level two, which is understanding about their health but not feeling very confident to feeling much more confident and engaged in their healthcare and starting to make those changes. So despite only 30% sort of, of people reattending, um, their activation or their interest in their physical healthcare improved. Thank you very much. We, we, we would love to answer any of your questions. Well, thank you, Asif and Heymant, for a very insightful webinar on physical health checks for people with psychosis.